y a cri. <laughs> you miss a cri. Can't you disappoint one day? Never. I am like, horrible. Maybe unpredictable. <laughs> why are you so predictable? Let me try another one. Shaku Maku. Oh my goodness me. Ah. <laughs> uh, Oh dear. Well, mm. A brilliant morning to everyone. I am Aurora Obo. Welcome to News Hub. I'm sure we did indeed. My pleasure to do this, my brother. And the greater one that you always choose to be our company every morning. It's a great privilege. We're not taking for granted. And we do the best we can to make it worth the while. And that's a big promise. Absolutely. And um, um, I'm happy we ha we're, we're set to roll on a, on a big day and on a big show. So to, before we delve into all of the Wahala <laughs> that we have on the table, which is basically what uh, we have to deal with from the news um, and editorial desk oftentimes. The fuel scarcity is uh. biting harder. And as usual, I was telling uh, Mustafa, is the uh, head of news radio, that it appears that we, there's, there's a template for response oftentimes. <laughs> how does it drive? It's just the dates that change, you know. You see the usual things that happen people with the jerry cans at the fuel stations. Uh, the filling stations, you see the petrol attendant say, no, we're not going to sell the people in jerry cans. And then the other guys who are along the road waiting with the jerry cans to sell at 500 naira, 400 naira per litre. And then while that is going on, Sean, you will then see the, um, um, you will then see the N uh, Ipman and the NNPC <laughs> release a statement, no, it's not steady supply of petrol, or we have enough petrol in storage. And then the queue start to drag and then they drag into the major roads and bam, the congestion happens and we start to wait. When is it going to be over? Well chronicled. I mean, <laughs> that's just uh, the way it it's actually It's a picture goes. of anarchy, yeah. huh? And it's a picture of anarchy for some people who already have, um, uh, it's like a routine. Some, by the time they're going home on Friday, they fill yeah. up their tank and they mm -hmm. just park their car and they don't drive all, all through the weekend. Come what may, they would not <laughs> drive because of the rigors of moving from one point to the other, especially within Lagos. Mm. Why for some others, it's just on Sunday morning, you're coming from church, you just want to fill up your tank and ensure that you don't have any worries the next day while you're going to work. But for some others, they're always very optimistic, thinking everything is okay and all of that. You know, we all can't be of the same temperament and what have you, and the same routine. We say, okay, let me just get to work then. After work, on my way home, um, I fill up the tank. And you get there, you find, after a very long day at work, you still have to be on the queue for hours and hours. Um, no excuses for, for any, 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 let me say, organization. Let me use an organization as an instance because, uh, of course, the nation is a combination of cells of different organizations from family to uh, communities and then to larger groups uh, as that. Uh, most of the times, it's, it's, there's no gain in saying that when you fail to plan, you plan to fail or no. There are some instances when things happen to you that you don't foresee. That's why when you're writing your budget, you have miscellaneous part where you say, okay, come what might, this one is set aside to take care of whatever, to cushion the effect, and if there's any need for me to go a step further mm -hmm. in fixing any problem, I would. Where am I driving at? This has become you know, a constant K in our lives. I mean... Some will say constant case should be every day. Well, if it's some, you just talked about a pattern that's never changed. It's happening at this point in time. Yeah. I've heard, for instance, uh, one of the unions talking about the fact that floods have impeded the movement of the commodity from one point to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, some others are giving different uh, uh, reasons to that. But the big question is, if we know by now that mm -hmm. we could uh, face such situations, what mm -hmm. have we... What are we putting in place? Right. Let's say it wasn't like this before. What are we putting in place? Because I think citizens would understand when you say, okay, this wasn't the pattern. It's yeah. changing. But this is what we're doing presently. Yeah. Uh, so please bear with us for now. This is, and this is where we are with that particular plan. It's very, you know, it's something you can understand. But, yeah. you know, one can keep talking. And it's just, <laughs> it could be stressful at times. That's the honest truth. Yeah. So we hope that all of the, all of the actors in this story get their acts together and make sure that uh, sooner rather than later uh, we can have petrol because I, I do see they actually sell it to the station but it's got to be done very quickly so they can clear up uh, the backlog. And talking about backlog and backwater, the state government, that's the Lagos state government, um, has come out to react to a couple of things going on. A couple of days ago there's a video that went viral. It showed um, the level of the water under the third mainland bridge and um, 
And that video had a, a caption on it like, oh, Lagos, get ready, it's about to happen. Mm. But even though I knew that there was a big, it was, it, I mean, you, if, if they say a picture speaks a thousand words, for these sort of things, you probably would need some more understanding about how these things work. And uh, great enough, you have the state government come out to explain just what that video uh, was about. So um, underneath the third mainland bridge, there's a section of the, of the water there which is raised on pal deck. So you've got the water on high level. But they still say, yes, the lagoon is full. But um, I guess basic understanding about how the geography of Lagos is will help a lot of people, especially those who reside in Lagos. We reside in Lagos, but very few people understand that Lagos isn't an island. It is islands around islands, are islands surrounded by water. More than seven islands make up what you know as uh, Lagos. So the lagoon eventually will empty into the Atlantic Ocean and um, the water from the streets go into the lagoon, the Lagos Lagoon. So that's why it's been mentioned, Lekki, Ikoi, Victoria Island, and some parts of Ekwe where uh, you're going to get the water on the street. So all the Commission of Environment was trying to explain yesterday was that because of the high water tide in the lagoon, you're going to see the water on most streets, major streets, remain for a while, but eventually it will get into the lagoon and then empty back into the Atlantic Ocean. So no need to panic. Those of you who are saying, oh my goodness, it's about to happen. Uh, <laughs> You know, there is an adage uh, in Europe. I don't know. I, I'm struggling how to translate it. That whoever the, the date Ishongo uh, yeah. had killed, you know, while he or she was there, would not join, you know, to insult the deity. Yeah. So if you can see what is happening to our, our brothers and sisters in Bayesa State, once again, our hearts go out to you. Yeah. Uh, many thanks to everyone who's reaching out to the state at this time of need. Uh, and to everyone who's still struggling there, we, we, our hearts and thoughts are with you uh, this morning in time. We had a very good discussion mm. with one of the uh, special advisors to the governor of the state on environment. He was uh, previously that. And of course, we would have wished that the, the conversation was more robust as more than we had yesterday. So we're thinking of bringing him back on the program. And there's so many questions we couldn't ask yesterday, one of which well, could be that, uh, are you reaching out to Bayesa State at this point in time? The state uh, had come out to say that it would appreciate every support. And I know that one of the presidential candidates was also there uh, on, Mon on Tuesday. Yeah. It's also, you know, commiserate with the people. And I heard also that some boom dropped on the, on the floor too. So, uh, I mean, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be a politician to be able to reach out to anyone. Any little thing will matter yeah. because these are our own people. So for Lagos State, uh, sincerely speaking, I'm not one, you know that sometimes some say, you know, and all of that, but I feel that the state may have some level of plans, okay? Uh, for instance, dreadages and all of that. And if they could come out emphatically to say that, mm -hmm. don't panic if you see any flood waters around you, uh, they would recede with time because we put things in place. Let's want, we want to believe that. But I won't lie to you. When the advisory came on Tuesday, some people were like, ah, we see, it, it, it was, you know, it, it caused a lot of panic for a lot of people. But the state government has said that, don't worry. Uh, you may not necessarily be happy right now, but you won't be sad. We got the situation under control. So, yeah. um, you know, it is what it is. We keep pushing. Yeah. We've got big stories this morning. We've got, we've got he's the youngest in the, in a long while, uh, Rish Sunak is the Prime Minister of the oh. United Kingdom. We'll talk about that this morning. Uh, just how that shifts the United Kingdom politics. Third Prime Minister in three months. Unbelievable, right? But that's exactly what it is. And uh, first Asian uh, to become a UK Prime Minister too. I mean, massive, massive. Um, and there's a lot of reactions to that. Um, but uh, yesterday, I saw him when he walked up to 10 Downing Street. I mean, yeah. he was very clever what he wanted to do. I mean, thankfully, Strauss, who was there, and then said that she made mistakes. So I, th I thought he was bold enough to have pointed out that the mistakes were made, and yeah. he's, been, he's in power. He's been put in there now to correct those mistakes. Yeah, and then for Nigerians who have been paying attention to Kemi Badinok, she's been reappointed uh, uh, to uh, our position, which he held before now. And I guess one other, you know, uh, yeah. responsibility added to that at this point in time. We are looking forward to how things will pan out. The UK, first it happened in the US, uh, where Barack Obama was campaigning to be president. Some people were so 
uh, you know, pessimistic about it. And I remember that most cars in Nigeria, where I live, you know, I'm proud of Nigeria, no apology, you know, <laughs> had the stickers of Obama for president in Nigeria. And I was like, guys, do you have any <laughs> votes to cast? They're like, don't worry. And then that was actually when many people could really realize that the really? social media could be as powerful as, as it could be. The case for the conservatives in the UK, uh, I'm sure that the next election in the UK will be so... I, I can't wait for the electionary campaign because many things that the opposition parties would have to say with regards to the ruling party at this point in time, you can predict. Yeah. However, when you have a country that's willing to, you know, uh, you know I mean, take the blame and make corrections so that things work out, mm -hmm. kudos. Absolutely. Kudos. That's right. very gutsy and very good. Right. Before we go on the break, we also have another big discussion this morning. Last week would have marked the 26th anniversary of the assassination of uh, Dele Giro, October 19, 1987. I cannot, 86 rather, I cannot forget uh, that day when I turned on the TV and uh, it was announced that um, the publisher of Newswatch, which was a big, big magazine back, many yeah. of you probably didn't, we did not know about it then, but I mean, then it was massive. Three men, I remember Ray Ekwu, Dan Agbese, Dele Giwa, and I came out the last person's name now. And they put up the news watch and were into investigative stories. I remember week after, month after month, they churned out real investigative stories. You know, for Milton, uh, who did the book uh, Paradise Lost, for me, that was Paradise Lost when I heard uh, Dele Giwa had been born. I mean, it, 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 it engulfed my thinking that how could he, I mean, he was a fine oh, gentleman, yeah. I remember you know, going through the Newsworth magazine after that, hoping that one day we'll get the killers of uh, no, Daily Giver. Up till now, nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. I remember yeah. I was a, let me use the Konkolo presenter then. Yeah. I was an intern. Yeah. I'm sorry, 26th and, and anniversary, not even 26. Good grief. Yeah. yeah. 36. Yes, 36. I, 36. I was 36. an intern uh, with, okay, okay, I was an intern when the, one of the anniversary that held, and then there was a scare. Yeah. One of the papers reported that there was something that happened. I can't remember if it was the fourth, I can't remember the particular anniversary that it was, and that there was a scare that, okay, uh, little bombs yeah. uh, could fly anywhere. So at so, such times, there were no social media, no, no, uh, no devices. So you had to depend on letters for you to get communication from uh, friends, business partners across the globe and within, so to speak. Mm. So getting letters became very scary. At that time, uh, you see people running away from post office as if it, as if it yeah. happened there. And then when people got letters in their homes, they would, they would be like opening. So postmasters, uh, post, post uh, officers, I want to imagine, yeah. they're better called, then had a, a very Herculean task to do at that point in time. Uh, it changed a lot of things for a while, but it seems as if we've forgotten that uh, because, for instance, we have our devices to work with, yeah. and then for us to measure the, the, the hazards that come with every profession. Uh, it's, it's one of those mysterious deaths that many Nigerians hope, hope yeah. will be unraveled. And I, I hope that would ever happen in our lifetime. Yeah. Uh, when we had to talk about it, unless the anniversary comes calling, nobody yeah. really. I mean, some would say maybe the family members have just said, okay, that is so rest in peace. They did, you know, had been done. And so no matter what, you know, happens, uh, the killers are there. But I think we should change that in this country, that no matter how long anyone perpetrates an act is, you know, right. remains evasive, we still ensure that the arms of the law catch, uh, catches up with that person. The arm of the law catches up with that person. So we're right. looking forward to that uh, in, in no distant time. Absolutely. We do hope that that happens uh, again sooner rather than later. It's one of those cold cases we hope that we can get and end to, and especially for the fourth estate of the REM. It will do a lot for us as journalists. We're going to go on a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll have a look at all the front pages look like uh, Chris Kendi Nwadi, who's Executive Director, Africa Governance and uh, Leadership, Initi Leadership Initiative, will be joining us. Please stay with us.
of technology do you understand? They took a look at my LinkedIn and they said, they didn't see, I can't forget the words, hmm. evidence of your work. On Tech Hub, we help you understand how tech can impact your life. Your phone and your SIM card is going to be a bigger asset. And with the power that we have with social media, with uh, the digital space right now, you can be anything you want to do. One of the other things we'll see is that people would have more faith in tech companies. And how much you can, through tech, impact your community. The people who watch my videos, the people who see me and see what I represent, those are the people that I'm online. Tech Hub is your one-stop platform for all things technology in Africa. Tech Hub, for a smarter you. With the rise in cases of kidnapping, banditry, cold clashes, bombings, and other acts of terror, it seems the current state of insecurity is relatively higher than ever before. Insecurity affects us all. It affects everything from our personal freedom, how we travel, from the cost of goods and services, to even our physical and mental health. Therefore, we have a duty to help security agencies protect us better wherever and whenever we can. If you see or hear something suspicious in your neighborhood, don't keep it to yourself, but be sure to say something to the right authorities. Remember, you could just be saving a life and that life you save could be yours. This is a message from the Silverbird Group. Thanks for staying with us on News Hub and welcome to where we bring you the newspaper headlines. Uh, today, a uh, very special, a lot of very interesting stories uh, we have on the cover pages of the papers. And you know, at uh, this time, we'll be speaking uh, and be getting the views of Chris Kendi and what do the Executive Director, African Governance and Leadership Initiative, who joins us live, although virtually, this morning. Hello, good morning. Thanks for joining us on the program, Chris. Thank you very much, my people, my people. My, our person, our person. <laughs> Thank you so much for being part <laughs> of the program. Now let's begin with this Nigeria Today, which has the lead story on 2023. Court nullifies all APC primaries in Rivers. A Sachs Governorship National State Assembly candidate and judgment tragedy of travesty of justice. That's according to the party. Uh, I'm sure I won't remember what happened also in 2019. It seems so uh, like it's becoming a norm. All right, still talking about legal uh, issues beside the nameplates this morning. Court convicts Mama Boko Haram, others over 34 million Naira fraud. And now back to other stories. Why we won't support Atiku's bid? Uh, Otombe Nui elders blow hot. will keep appealing to them. That's according to, uh, all right. Momodu and so the stories federal government deplores security alerts on Lagos on Nigeria by foreign embassies. Federal government deplores security alerts on Nigeria by foreign embassies and now to feel cues as they return to Lagos, Abuja, other states that are also are facing hardship. That's the story there. I also find this picture story that shows from President Goodluck Jonathan and Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju during the book launch uh, that uh, deputizing and governors in Nigeria by Kano State Governor Abdullahi Ganduje, which held uh, in Abuja on Tuesday. You also find this very interesting story there, lower to strip. Nigeria may remain poverty capital to 2050, experts warned. Why could this be? Get all the details when you turn to page seven of this Nigeria today. And then we go on to the Nigerian News Direct. And the big story here is with the petrol scarcity. Talks about how motorists in Lagos and Abuja are battling uh, to get the product. 
there's enough supply, is what the authorities are saying, the situation to stabilize in two days. We keep our fingers crossed and see if it will happen as they say. Then uh, Nigeria's Angote refinery will transform downstream sector, according to the Ghanaian Petroleum Authority. I will resign if anyone proves it. I promise to hand over to him as governor, says uh, the colorful governor of River State, uh, Yusom Wike. Uh, keeps finding innovative ways to get himself on the front pages. Huh? Uh, above the banner, N, uh, this one, NLNG, it's a Nigeria liquefied natural gas, calls for more investment to ensure a reliable LPG uh, supply. Uh, LPG stands for liquefied petroleum gas. You can get the stories and many more in the Nigerian News Direct. Let's now go to the Punch newspaper today, which leads with a story on Jumbo Severance Package. Buhari or Shimbaju others get 63 billion naira pensioners kick. And uh, writers here worthy of mentioning or reading, uh, beg your pardon, ministers, governors, commissioners, national assembly members, special advisors to benefit. And uh, it's inhuman pensioners who worked 35 years, not paid for 10 years. That's according to a union. And uh, economists slam politicians say they are insensitive and are MFAC to review remuneration. You can get all the details on page two of the paper. Of course, the paper also has a report on how the field queues have returned across the country. It's captioned, few scarcity grounds, Lagos, Ogun, Abuja, commuters stranded. And this buttress by uh, pictures of uh, motorists are queuing up to buy fuel. I can easily recognize the, the taxi of Ogun State that's there. And we have Abuja and Lagos as well uh, being reported on the front page of the punch today. Uh, when you move above the name plates, Tinobu Obi unfold agenda for women, Atiku absent. Uh, that story is reported there, uh, page 42 of the paper. And you find uh, flooding. Federal government plans intervention fund, six, 612 killed. British Prime Minister Sunak sets economic stability agenda. And now this next story, one of those that really caught many people, I mean, Let's see the way it goes. Duchess of Success excited over 43% Nigerian ancestry. And I, I remember one of those good little girls said it to me. I said, oh, she's Nigerian. OK. Lagos Ibadan Bridge joints oh, reopen. Drivers slam Julius Berger. A masked gunman abducts Lagos notaries in broad daylight. By Yelsa Imo Kogi, governor polls hold November 11. That's according to INEC. The story is reported inside the Punch newspaper today. All right, we're going next uh, from the Punch to the leadership, and the leadership is staying with the politics. Uh, wake me up inside. Finally, Atiku Wiki reconciliation collapses. The question I guess I ask is <laughs> was it ever there, this relationship? And, um, that's all right. So, okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. It uh, looks like um, that's uh, we'll have to move away from that story, that paper, and go on to um, the Daily Sun. And the Daily Sun's got the story about uh, fuel scarcity spreading, uh, saying that transport fares has, have also gone up. Uh, Lagos, Abuja, paralyzed as uh, Ipman blames depots. If you go to the bottom of the page, you see a story about the federal government deploring security alert by foreign embassies. Fortify your environs, the Christian Association of Nigeria is telling churches. On the right-hand side of your screen, you see this one about Nigeria ready to become a global vaccine production distribution hub. Then this one, I will resign if anyone can prove I promise to make him successes. And all, another daily I saw earlier on, that's um, the governor of River State, uh, Yesom Wike. Uh, on flawed, INC, IYC accused Buhari's federal government of abandoning the Niger Delta. And beside the banner here, on Nam Dikano's case saying, why we transferred 21 justices, says the appeal uh, court. 
federal government names building after the late uh, Ikeazo S-A-N. You can get the stories and many more in the Daily Sun. All right, Chris, let's come to you now and talk about the fact that uh, it's been uh, <laughs> so, so long that Dele Giwa had died, the assassination, uh, the, the people, the perpetrators are yet to be unmasked by the Nigerian government. As a journalist, I want to imagine what's going on on your mind. What's going on in your mind at this time? It was. I remember vividly that very day, just as uh, I was saying. I think it was on a Sunday, and I think it was, uh, yes, it was a Sunday, and uh, it was early in the morning. I think I was in secondary school then, uh, when we got the report that something happened uh, in Legiwa and somewhere off at the New Jones. And I remember vividly also later on that uh, there was a particular hospital on Okwebi Road where he was taken to. And uh, that also became like a mecca for a lot of uh, where they visited and rest of them. And the story was all over. In fact, so many people couldn't believe that that happened. It was under uh, the government of General uh, Ibrahim Babangida. And the question has always been, who killed the legal war? If you remember that for a long time, that has always been the question who killed the until today. Nobody has been indicted for that death. And I remember vividly how late uh, Ganifa Ami fought. He was a lawyer uh, to the legal war. He fought to his death uh, he died. Uh, that case, that uh, it's so obvious that it was conspiracy from the highest quarters until today. We don't know uh, who killed the legal war. But that was the first and probably the last uh, letter bomb uh, assassination in the history of Nigeria. And so many things, conspiracy uh, theories came up and the rest of them. But here we are, several years after, uh, we are still mourning that one of the finest that Nigeria ever had. Uh, when it comes to investigative journalism, this was a man that gave it all. And um, it was so devastating. The death of the lake were practically brought to the end. Uh, the run of a uh, news watch as a magazine of refuge. Uh, don't forget that uh, that also uh, news watch also battered another very viable uh, uh, news magazine again, um, uh, Tell Magazine. That also tried to take off from where news watch stopped. But uh, it's quite unfortunate uh, that uh, we lost such a man. I remember vividly that they had a mother. Uh, you remember the pictures of the mother was everywhere. Mama was crying and crying and crying. And uh, it, it, it's just a bit, that is the hazard of this job. And um, some of us, I have always said that journalism is next to uh, military uh, because at any given point in time, the kind of job we do is so, uh, is it, a job that you cannot explain what will happen next. And most often than not, uh, we step on uh, snakes, we step on tiger tails, we step on lion's tail, not knowing who we feel like grief. Some people cannot be able to stomach some of the stories that we publish, which is always true. And they find a means of trying to do the unfaithful. Just, just do a Google search uh, briefly now and see how many journalists we are doing across the globe in the last one year. It will shock you. Uh, but those are the hazards of the job, but it will stop us from what we're supposed to do because we're supposed to be the mirror of the society. Remove journalism from uh, uh, from the society, then we have a terrible chaotic situation where leaders will not be held accountable, where leaders will decide to do whatever they like and whatever they want at the given, any given point in time. May his soul rest in peace. Um, I have not heard from the wife, from me, and uh, I think his son also, Billy. Those are two popular names also there. I've not had, I don't know where they are now, but maybe the uh, soul of um, the Lady Giwa continue to rest in peace. As a baby presenter, when the anniversary was being commemorated, and it just blew my mind how something, one must have been in primary school, or maybe when that happened. So when the anniversary came, but we, we hardly ever celebrate, or not necessarily celebrate, uh, commemorate it in such a way that it will push for 
the uh, killers to the identity of the killers to be unraveled. But uh, we do really hope this changes. Thank you so much, Chris, for that. Oh. Yeah, so we, we thank you very much, Chris. And, and, and if you get, get onto the, the stories also, Chris, for um, today, big story around uh, petrol scarcity across um, Lagos State and uh, neighboring states. What, what have you heard and um, how is it biting, uh, Chris? Um, I, I was even wondering how yourself and uh, <laughs> my sister got to the I got to the studio this morning because with the long queue, I've forgotten that there's a big uh, filling station near your office. Probably you have killed there since three o'clock and you've been able to get for it. But, <laughs> but on a more serious note, um, <laughs> on a more serious note, it's quite unfortunate that I've pointed out um, To me, I think uh, this is uh, this uh, first category may be artificial to some sort. Uh, then NPC, as usual, come to tell us that they have enough within their and that is a you know that is what is every time. But this is my rather than one them because the issue is not um, we not having enough fuel uh, petrol uh, within the depots. The fact is that if man came out with a statement yesterday that the depots have increased the prices of discharging this fuel petrol and it's going to affect them. And don't forget that the, the marketers don't have the sole right of just increasing uh, the pump price. Uh, although the sector has been deregulated, but it's still regulated to a large extent where prices are fixed, uh, although within certain spectrum. And um, that is what the uh, embedded market has. And you know that over 80 to 90 percent of the of, um, uh, filling stations that discharge and dispense uh, petroleum are embedded market. Has. The only alternative is the NFPC, which is not. Uh, uh, we don't have so many of them around. So I hope this issue will be resolved as quickly as possible so that normalcy can return to Lagos because once Lagos catches uh, sneezes, every other part of the country catches cold. Um, it has been on in Abuja for a long time, not the reason. The problem with the flooding within the local jazz is have stopped so many petroleum trusts from crossing from the southern part to the northern part and um, Abuja as it were. So for that, that has been why we had that kind of uh, uh, queue uh, along the line. But the fact is that if we have done what we need to do, and that takes us uh, back to uh, Cheo and uh, I will take us back to what I always said. If we have done what we need to do, if our refineries, refineries are working perfect, you don't need to wait for uh, petroleum to come from Lagos to Abuja. There is a refinery in Kaduna that can serve in most part of the north. So that whenever they have a they just drive from Kaduna to Abuja, it's just less than how many hours, about two, three hours, they'll be in Abuja, another person. But two refineries are not working. The one of the south south, that's supposed to be one in Port a very, very big one. That in itself is not working. The one in Worry is not working. And we on a yearly basis, we budget billions and billions of naira uh, for the maintenance or uh, turn around or whatever, turning in or turning up, whatever they call it. I, understand. I was I was listening to the managing director of group managing director of NMPC. Uh, uh, is it limited or unlimited? They call themselves now. Uh, talking some time ago when he was asked, how come we are spending so much money, billions of naira, on turn around maintenance for refineries that doesn't work? And you still have people there. And the, well, and the answer he gave was uh, very sarcastic to me. He was saying that oh. Uh, the fact that they are not coming, that are not necessarily that we're going to shut down the place. Uh, we said we should sack all the people that are there. Uh, if they sack them, what will happen? Vandaliz uh, vandalization, and we want to come on park on streams. And they're giving all sorts of excuses now. Just like look at a man that's supposed to be running our uh, oil sector. But the fact is that that will not be the kind of thing. On to do the needful. So this is artificial. But I can tell you that I remember vividly we are moving into the Christmas period. And you know what happened during Christmas. There's going to be first shortages across Nigeria. Uh, Nigerians are going to find it very, very difficult to be able to get well. And I also tell you for free that so many parts of Nigeria in the past two, three years, apart from Lagos, Abuja, probably Port Harcourt, and one or two states, most of the states don't sell fuel at those prices that have been given or that have been uh, given as the accurate price for fuel. They sell it, they, they buy them at very, very high exorbitant prices. So we are looking at Dangote. One of the uh, uh, newspapers talked about Dangote 
Ghana saying that it will bring a lot of information and rest of them. To me, that is still a monopoly. If I go to depend on Dangote alone for our fuel consumption, that means that whatever Dangote decides that we're going to pay is what we're going to pay. Who is going to regulate that? It's already happening in some other sectors where you see Dangote having monopoly, cement, and the rest of them. May God help Nigeria. <laughs> I mean, uh, so to speak. And in either, in either, you must say, I share. In any way, you just want to say, man, we have to get it right. Thank you, Chris. Uh, now the numbers should be on the screen. You're free to call in and be part of the conversation. I know the stories that uh, catches your fans. So let's talk about them on this segment of the program today. Um, Chris, are you worried about the severance package put together? for former leaders of the country, especially former presidents and some, you know, chosen aides. All right, uh, Chris, one more. Before you react to that, we have a first caller who joins us from Benway State. Good morning. Hello. Oh, Good Ada. Morning. Good morning. Ada Welcome. Please go on. Good morning to our guest, Chris. Um, let me tell you something. This were accused. Returning to Lagos, Abuja, and other states, it has also hit us in just, you know. Mm -hmm. I heard some people say they went to the queue around 3 a.m. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, my concern now is uh, it should be addressed very soon because it poses a security risk, considering the U.S. Uh, security alert. You know, we now have too many people converging in a place. Then they are just like uh, your, your guest said, uh, uh, Gote, as far as I'm concerned, I've never believed that that process refinery will change any uh, much, uh, I mean, in terms of a uh, well, whenever it comes on. Then court, uh, court uh, uh, announced all APC primary elections in reverse. This is due to lack of internal party democracy. It's really unfortunate that political parties cannot conduct credible primaries and the courts are now compelled to decide, to, uh, decide the winners taking the functions of INEC. This is the threatening our democracy. Then about delegate, I remember very well when the, this, time, this uh, letter bomb issue came mm. up, you know, it was news all over the place. It was really a sad one. And it's ever since then, apart from speculations on who the delegate, mm. one of the last, one of the last music circulated, ever since then, prominent people have been killed and nobody has been arrested. It's only from the known government that's continuing to today. God bless you. Let's not give up on this country. Shall be well. Okay, then, ma. Thank you very much, um, Ada. Shall be well. Let's go to Benway State where we have uh, Galba on uh, standby. Galba, please go ahead. It's not only the queue, it's not only in Lagos and Abuja. It's affecting us here. As of Sunday, things start gradually, gradually, gradually. Some of the police stations that are even holding it, honestly, because they discover that the other neighboring states are finding it difficult to get the PMS. So they are holding it, they are closing their police station now. The actual price that we are buying, the normal price that we are buying before, we are buying at the rate of 179 and 80. Now 200, 210. And the fact is that they told the tankers, I call that the asset, they tend to alternative group on Calabar. We are close to Calabar here. From Bandikia, you get to Benue State. From Ogota, you get to Benue State. So we're not supposed to say, experience all this hardship. But now in Makodi here, we can have surpassed. And gradually, gradually, the thing is moving on. Before you know it, we start getting it 300. We're not finding it difficult to get black market everywhere. So the government did need to do the thing as early as possible. If not, I'm telling you, this thing can lead to even January. Now we're in October, November, December. Festive season is uh, approaching. Before you know it, artificial scarcity, which is wrong, which is bad. You take your children to school, it's another explosive. Before you get poor, you spend two hours, three hours in police station. And you buy the absorber prices 200, 210, 250. Have a nice day over there. Thank you so much, Garba. Mazi Okora, for we, we thank you for joining us on the program today. Well, good morning. I'm just saying good morning, my sister. Good morning, my brother. I'm well, and the chef. Well, the Adamawa election caught that. Look, we have to be very, very careful. The only woman that appeared caught her just keep the election mark which means something is wrong somewhere like that. And the FCC have told us that they are out for election uh, buyers, good buyers, those, those toxic politicians who will bring toxic money to give people. But I will advise the FCC, now that the election is about coming 2023, uh, go and train, I would call ad hoc staff in all the states, all the local government, and train them. 
and let them be part and parcel of your, your, your vigilante group so that you do the needful. Not when that time comes, or if you come have a sort of fun, sort of uh, staff, and say, like, this is the time for you to do what you do. And the fraud, please, I want to find out from Sheon and Aboda. This ecological fund, which Jonathan signed, first one, second one, third one, fourth one. Where is the money? I think there is need for you, to the journalists, to find out. Because the fund Jonathan gave out during that time when he was in the office, and even they used it to make sure that he doesn't were secured that time. I don't think Nigeria was open because right now even the people are coming and people are sending relief materials to, to those for, for fraud. And to, please, do not be sending notice. Notice has not, has, there's no immunity in notice. You said, put same food that people will eat and have energy and push their immunity. Not be sending notice that has nothing to offer human beings. And ecological fund, she will look at the World Bill Summit where we have experts at least 10 or 12 molecular scientists, professors in Nigeria, that will run those things. I think by the time the president returns that Nigeria will start with the uh, During the COVID-19 days, they say they have started some involved. They have started one in uh, uh, Umudike. They have started one in Ibadan. I don't know what happened. Good morning, Masu Krapo from Aotuku in Aten State. Good morning, Abu. Good morning, my sister Shion. Thank, Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Let's go to Plato State where we have Angela on standby. Uh, Angela, please go ahead. Yes, hello. Hello, Angela. We can hear you. Go on, please. Yes, Chris, Chiu, and Chris. Good morning. Long time. I miss you guys. It's so nice to have you back. Yes. I want to talk about the fuel. Even in Plateau State here, even today I'm not going to work because there's no... The, the, the transportation to where I'm going to work, I cannot even go. So the government should do something about it. I really want us to talk about the fuel. Please, we cannot be staying at home, and I, I hate staying at home like this. Uh, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you so much. Always nice to have you, uh, your thoughts on the program. Let the calls keep coming. In the meantime, Chris, I asked the question. I'd like for you to react to what the callers uh, had to say, as well as uh, the issue on the seven package put together for past leaders, or maybe those serving that will be leaving office in, uh, very soon. Yes, um, in a country uh, that's uh, under serious abject poverty, it um, saddens my mind and my heart whenever I see these civil packages being given to our former leaders. Um, don't forget that these people don't need this money. She, I'll tell you they don't need These are billionaires. If you are a governor, you are already a billionaire. That, uh, if you are going to stay there for one year, you are already a billionaire. So why would we want to continue to pay? If you become a senator, if you become a House of Rep member, um, or whatever, you are already in money. They have a way of making money. And, and this money is not the type that uh, you even have money. Uh, it's not the type, this is Ghana must go be back in Ghana must. So what we continue to, uh, I continue to see and read about this severance allowances, it saddens me. It's not only severance allowances and money. Don't forget that some of them go as far as having their vehicles about two or three change on a yearly basis. They have uh, uh, cooks, gardeners, blah, blah, blah for life. And um, so those are the back of office. And uh, most of them, not, that is why you see them trying to kill themselves to get there so that they will have all these goodies. But when you jeopardize that and look at, uh, 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 look at what happens with other sectors, and you just uh, look at, for example, the military. We saw some weeks back where retired military officers came to Abuja and we are sleeping and just uh, on the floor outside, begging and calling for uh, the payment of their pension to the areas which for years have been there, that which have not been paid in serious art condition. These are people that they, that they try as much as possible to defend this country while in service. We have seen this happen to teachers, we have seen this happen to Zopra, uh, um, um, civil servants and the rest of them in various states. In fact, some governors are using it now as a bet and say, oh, out of 50, 50 months, we have paid three, we have paid six, we have paid five. As if it's not, that is their gratuity. That is what they rely on and that is what they, they, they intend to rely on. But when you see this as like that, for me, I will ask, what would a, a, a good Lord Jonathan need uh, such money for? He doesn't need it. Jonathan, good Lord Jonathan, for all intents and whether you like it or not, it's well made. Uh, Babangida, Babangida is a 
billionaire in several in several currencies, name the others. So I think that we should now start reinforcing ourselves with this level of poverty, of which we have just been announced that in about 2015, Nigeria will still remain the poverty capital of the world and the rest of them. We have serious uh, unemployment um, issues. Our youth are graduating and not finding anything to right. do. No industry. Everybody is trying to jump right. and the right. rest right. of them. So to me, Absolutely. I think we should have a second look at that. A second look and plenty to, plenty to talk about. Uh, let's get to the next tranche of papers and we come back uh, for your final thoughts, uh, CK. And it's still the review of the front pages on News Hub on this fine uh, midweek morning. Let's move quickly to Daily Trust. And the Daily Trust, um, I think we have not gone through Daily Trust yet. Yeah. So we have the president, it's something CK was talking about the vice president, Senate president, speaker. CGN governors and others to enjoy pay hike. Mm? Some people have all of the luck in the world, right? <laughs> if you go to the left side of the page, um, you have the story about the Western fuel scarcity. And thank you all for calling in because it gives us a dashboard view of all that is going on in the country. And then if you go to below the banner, you have the federal government dismissing U.S. security alert saying Nigeria now safer. I don't know what you thought about the interministerial panel or United Nations uh, Information Day on le media, lit um, media and literacy. Some interesting thoughts from Lai Mohammed and uh, Issa Pantami, members of the president's cabinet. Mm -hmm. Sacked APC directors accused Adamo of withdrawing three billion naira from um, secret accounts. And then Jonathan six legal provisions to protect uh, deputy governors. Go, go to the bottom of the page and you see uh, President Buhari blaming climate change of a, on the flood that's killed over 612 people, uh, affected 3.2 million Nigerians. He was speaking in Seoul, the Korean capital. He was talking with uh, the former UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon. Get the stories and many more on the Daily Trust. Let's go to Nigerian Tribune this morning, which uh, of course leads with a story that must be causing brouhaha in the river state politics, especially as it has to do with uh, the opposition party in the state. Court nullifies APC primaries in rivers. I can get the details on page two of the paper. The paper also reports on Atiku's visit to flood victims in Bayelsa State and the riders there, uh, a couple of riders, their promises to complete Desin Hosa uh, Dam to manage a release of excess water from Lagdo Dam and also uh, urges federal government to establish temporary fund for farmers and other promises there. All right, let's also take a look at other stories yet to be talked about. Uh, or your government faults Fashola on Lagos Ibado Expressway delay. You can get the details on page 27. And in case you missed out on this, Kogi Imo by Yelsa governorship elections to hold on November to hold November 2023. Oil thefts, rogue ships turn off identification surveys to avoid detection. That's according to the MPA manager director. And you also find marketers sell petrol at 195 naira as queues return. Why would transfer 21 judges? There's a story credited to the appeal court. And uh, of course, Lagos sets up inquests on rather causes of IVD's wife's death. I want to imagine that you know about the story then. Police arrest suspected kidnappers and robbers with goods worth 25 million naira in Oyo State. These are other stories inside the Nigerian Tribune today. And then the Daily Independent, it's time for you to turn on the private investigator hat. How vessels enter Nigerian waterways steal oil by the Nigerian Ports Authority. These days everyone is an investigator. Here's what they say they do. They turn off tracking device to evade detection as well as arrest. You can read up some more and find out how this happens. Then um, you still have other stories here. NCC offers two more slots on 3.5 gigahertz band for 5G services. And then uh, three months after regulatory hiccups hinder aero 
from flying. If you go to the top of the page, um, appears some people want to leapfrog into the future. Mm? CBN begins enforcement of 100% cashless economy today. E Naya records 8 billion Naya transactions one year. Please let us inform, uh, help us inform <laughs> Mr. Mirfili that um, we no get internet for many parts of Nigeria. Even in Lagos, they claim we have 5G. I was in somewhere in Lekki, trying to be like Mr. Mirfili's cashless future citizen. I ended up spending two hours living as a caveman. I couldn't access my network. I couldn't access my banking app. Let's just say I went manual. <laughs> you went analog. <laughs> analog. Please, I advise you all to stay analog as you read these stories more in Daily Independent. <laughs> the Daily, Daily Champion also leads with the, Oh, my God. Oh, how vessels are used to steal Nigeria's crude oil and go undetected and accounts given by the MPA manager director. All right, you have upper uh, part of the paper just above the name plate. Senate probes federal government's 774,000 public works are uh, worth 52 billion naira. I want to imagine you remember that time with the Minister for Works then. I uh, still President Wafashala talked about how this would improve the lives of people. Of course, uh, the Senate also demands names, accounts, phones, num phone numbers of beneficiaries. All right, 2023, APC, Obaseki, trade words. And you find other very interesting stories there. Nigeria facing climate change challenges. That's credited to President Buhari. And you also find NNNG calls for more investment to ensure reliable LPG supply. And INEC fixes dates for the elections, Imo Kogibayesa, and other very interesting stories there. All right. I don't know if Sikian is back and um, we can have him resume. But right, so Sikian, um, I, was just, I was just trying to understand. I, I was just laughing, basically, you know, this cashless thing. You know, I, I walked up to a damn food drive. It was so bad, I couldn't move out of where I was. And I said, I have everything that should get me out of this, this hole I'm in. Mean, I can't find a way. So I walked up to the damn food driver and said, you know, I could get into this vehicle, charter your entire bus to where I'm going. And would you mind if I transfer the money to your account? The man said, you said what? You say waiting. <laughs> I said, uh, well, you know, just I thought you were cashless, you know. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's terrible. And yes, yes, uh, well, it's terrible because in the past few uh, weeks, it's been terrible transacting business with most of these apps. Uh, and it's bad. You want to transact money, uh, and uh, you go to most of these bank apps, they are down. You can't do anything. Just like you, I was so stranded some time ago and um, because of this cashless issue i hardly carry cash with me since i have my card and uh, i use an uh, i use an uh, um, uber or boat sometime a few, few days back only for me to get to the place to pay to get to where i'm going to to pay becomes it became a problem we struggle i struggled i struggled i didn't know what to do and uh, i just have to beg the guy to take me to uh, an atm card um, uh, 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 an atm point and you get to the ATL point, most of those are not also working. So I don't know what the problem is and how the, um, the banks are having this serious issue. Even if you enter the bank to even do some transaction, they'll still tell you that they're having a major problem. Most of them, they'll tell you that, oh, don't worry, drop it, uh, you get a lot. And uh, you uh, transact some business, you don't get the alert on uh, 12, 48 hours. And, and uh, I think and the, the central bank, our bank industry, should, should do something like this. It's not encouraging at all within 30 a, a minute <laughs> uh, so it's happened in river state again uh, the court has nullified all the primaries held by the opposition party in the state apc uh, what does this portend for 2023 also uh, i'd like for you to mention even just 30 seconds just split uh, the fact that the mpa's managing director says well the ships that come to steal our oil always switch off the identification device so that we can't track them I will take three years ago. They won the APC uh, judgment in the uh, Court. Um, this is not the first time. And I wonder the kind of political party APC is uh, there. APC seems to be the party with the greatest default when it comes to primaries and uh, picking them. Don't forget the issue they had in Tarapa. Uh, no, they had in, uh, yes, in Zamfara. 
that problem is apparent, which next to they are missing out. And the BDP uh, government uh, from BDP was uh, was picked. That was totally an the same thing in 2019. I wonder why they cannot get their ass together. They also lost out in Bayesa, where they won an election. Uh, for whatever reason, the governor was taken up there. just it took uh, less than 48 hours to the inauguration. And they need to put their ass together. Okay. And then you can also see the court is playing at the venue, where yeah. the governor is saying that he's not back in Antigua, blah, blah, blah. Right. Meanwhile, the chairman of PDP is from Benue State. You cannot right. imagine the kind of politics uh, Governor Tom is playing mm -hmm. in Then the one of the issue, let's not even talk about the oil right. theft. That theft comes from the high economy of those in government at the NMPC. They know what they are doing. Whenever they think they are buying up, do what they are doing. And the government wants to take a decision on Absolutely. that. But for now, we yeah. could just decide. Right. To coin that magazine, lightning don't strike the same spot twice, but it appears that uh, APC is making that uh, a normal routine nowadays. But thank you very much, uh, Chris Kendon, who the Executive Director, Africa Go Governance and Leadership Initiative. My people, my people, have a wonderful day. Yeah. And you can keep the 50 Kobo. We'll go on a quick break. When we come back, uh, she'll be in with a news update. Please stay with us on News Hub. <laughs>